Hi, my name is Gertrude from G Designs. Welcome to part two of our Harmony Quilt Along. Welcome back, everybody. Sorry, we're a few minutes late. Had a little tech connection issues, but we are here and a lot of you are here as well, I'm seeing. So, and fun to see some of your pro progress on the part one of the instructions. So, which was step one and step two in the pattern. So just for fun, let's check out some of your progress. I saw some photos on Facebook. So let me put, put some up. So Lori's already working on her step one and then look at this fun setup at melissa's they have friends over everybody socially distanced and got the big screen going so this is so much fun i'm, I'm sure you're having fun and sylvia's got her good start there staying organized as she goes now really fun my friend doug lico from antler quilt designs he is sewing with us. He's working on his block. He's got his first steps done and looking beautiful, Doug. And so is Terry Atkinson. She is rewarding. I don't know if it's rewarding herself. She makes a few blocks and then she has to make a mask in between. That's a way to get some masks done. That will probably be the only, I would need to do that to be motivated to make masks. Probably it would be a contingent on me getting to sew a few blocks in between <laughs> but great job so thank you terry and doug for being with us it's fun to have friends i didn't even know they were going to do this so that's pretty awesome so before we dive into our demo uh i first want to announce our winners from the first segment so our two winners from the first segment oh you're not ready with it mr honey producer yeah oh they disappeared so he's gonna type it back up and we'll, we'll we'll just tell him at the end of the end of the segment not a big deal but um i wanted to before i dive into the instruction we are also have a special guest with us live now we were having a little connection issue so we hope we can stay connected but uh let me introduce you to one of my great friends of amazing artist do we have her no, no we don't have her <laughs> Of course this is technology always so much fun isn't it never works when it needs to work yeah, it's a weird situation right that's the weird situation well i'll let you oh, hold on, let see she's... okay she's working on it so this friend of mine she is a, a world-renowned teacher she's an art quilter her name is lyric kennard and i hope i'm pronouncing it right you probably correct me but uh, she, I, we met, I think it's a couple of years ago. We were teaching together in the Louisiana area, close to uh, New Orleans. And so we got to hang out for quite a few days. It's really fun when we get to hang out for a few days with a few teachers. So that was really fun. And then I uh, got to know each other. And she does something totally different from me. I admire her so much because it's so cool and so way out of my realm and uh, something I could never do but I'm determined maybe one day I can take her class and, and become artsy like that. Let's but super cool things. We're gonna check in, see if it works. Hi, Lyric. Hey, y'all, how are you doing? Yeah, she's here. Oh. <laughs> you getting a little ha button happy over there. <laughs> so good to see you and what a gorgeous bright quilt behind you. It's good to see you too. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, and you are connecting with us from, you're in North Carolina? Yeah, right outside right. of Raleigh. Right outside of Raleigh. I've been there. Yay, I was teaching there one time. So it's funny because Larry told me that she chose this quilt to hang behind her because it's the biggest quilt, only quilt that you made big enough to <laughs> be a backdrop. Here I am, all my quilts are too big to even see the whole thing. <laughs> so that's why we're it's so fun to be so different so I want to just yes. like get into it and it's because it's fun for me to learn about too so how when did you start quilting how did you get into quilts well I've sewn clothes all my life you know mm -hmm. just so I've always had a great great love for fabric and then right after I had my first baby I was staying home going a little stark raving insane right yeah. So a friend said, you need to get out of the house and talk to grown-ups, so come to Quilt Be with me. And I did, and I was just completely hooked. 
And it was the only thing I did for probably the next 10 years that stayed done yeah. when I did it. <laughs> You know, I had I had five kids over the next like 15 years, um, but I could do a stitch or two and come back and it would be yeah. right like and I it, left it. It doesn't it would go be bad. It's still, it's just going to be there. And the right? kids don't come and unmess everything you just cleaned right, up, right? right? Yeah, so, yeah. so that's how I got into it. And I started out as a traditional quilter. I right. can applique, I can piece, I can, I can do all the things all. with the best of them. Right. And you, do you have a background in art or anything or just always an interest? Um, I've always done creative things, but mm -hmm. I didn't have a background. in it's, it's a funny story. My dad was a fine art teacher in high school his whole mm -hmm. career. And so I refused to do art. Of course. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> As I thought I was rebel. going to be a musician, right? I, yeah. I was going to be the first female French horn player in the Berlin Philharmonic. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> no hubris there. <laughs> no pressure. Um, no. And then when I had kids uh, or when I went to college, I decided I was too, my interests were too varied to focus only on one thing, which um, a professional music career would have required. So I have a degree in English literature. I have a minor in German. I have a minor in architecture. And um, yeah, so I'm just all over the map. And I still spent most of my time in the music department. Oh, <laughs> so I just had my great. fingers in all the pies. Yeah. Um, but I did start basic design there. And it wasn't until a few years after I was quilting that I went to um, one of the larger regional quilt shows and stood in front of a row of art quilts like I had yeah. never seen before and just went, oh, oh, I didn't yeah. know they could do that. <laughs> and just had a completely hormonal breakdown and right. I was in tears and immediately went off to do that, to learn how yeah. to do that. So it's been my um, love and passion and sanity ever yes. since then right and so how long have you been teaching it um i think since mm, 2001 so about 20 years um okay. it's it's yeah. really funny because you know dad high school art teacher mom elementary school teacher and uh, that was another thing that i was never going to do never i was never teach. going to be a teacher mm -hmm. and out of all my siblings most of us are teachers of one kind or right. another i think i have it best though you yeah because i i get to go play with quilters who are the best students who and are the best most fun to play with right exactly and i get I to travel say, all over the world to do right it. Yeah, exactly uh, you travel just as much as i did well we did before March. <laughs> right. But uh, it's funny because my, I, my background is a teacher too. I'm a PE teacher. And then I taught one mm. year in school and I said, oh, I'm not going to teach again. But then I, I kind of went into teaching aerobics and stuff. So I thought, okay, it's better to teach adults that are there at their own free will. <laughs> right, right. And then I was done with that. I was not going to teach ever again because I did one too many step touches. <laughs> and then here we are still teaching. But Again, they're there at their own free, passionate will. <laughs> right. So excited to learn. So it's the best. And doesn't it feel more like play than work? Yes. Yeah. You know? yes. So like everything before we teach a class, are you thinking this in your head? It's always just, they don't pay me enough to do this. But the minute I get in with the students, it's like, I can't believe I get paid right. to do this. This is so much fun. <laughs> yes, I know. Exactly. And then it's just being there and having fun and make it everybody's day fun. So that's really great. Now, so uh, uh, one of the things that really intrigues me with what you do is that you, it, you know, cause my teaching, we're working on a specific technique or a specific project and we, that's what everybody's doing, but you more explore, let people ex explore their creativity and just kind of play and stuff like that. And you told me you had some, you've been playing with some stuff. So do you got something to show us? Yeah. So one of the things I really love to teach is the process of design. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so many quilters and so many people are afraid, you know, I can't make my own thing up. I don't know how to do this. I don't have an art degree. Um, but it's like learning to read, you know, yeah. you're, you're taught the basics, right? So I've been just playing around. I have this really fun thing. It's a pack of cards that every single card has a different design exercise on it. 
and they're meant to be just fun little easy exercises. I do them with little kids all the time. So they each teach you about one of the elements of art. So with color, one of the things I've been playing with, oh, and I just realized this is a good example of it, is complementary colors. Yeah. So when colors are absolutely opposite of each other on the color wheel, it's like the hero and the villain. Mm -hmm. And because they're so different from each other, they make yep. each other really look more of what they are. So I've been playing with that concept with just fun little things like We've got um, green and red opposite mm -hmm. of each other on the color wheel. And what happens if we change the value of each one? And value is um, one of the basic elements of art, how much light or dark is in light the color. Dark, yeah. So you can have dark green or light green and light mm -hmm. red or dark red. And it kind of changes who the focal point, who the hero and who the sidekick is. Yep. You know, so and just- the whole mood. Yeah. So I just been saving, I always save, I do a lot of fusible applique, quick and easy, right? Yeah. Um, so That's the only applique I, I do. Yeah. I mean, and it's a really, really fun and easy way. In class, we just actually use scissors and a glue stick with our fabric on paper. You know, just yeah. because we're not making things, we're learning right. concepts. Um, so with that concept, you just learn that the lighter or darker that you make, the color determines... Mm -hmm in the complementary color scheme, who's the hero and who's the villain or yeah. the star and the sidekick. And if they you don't create want harmony. Them. They do, they do. And <laughs> complementary though is like visual excitement. It's pop, right. like the, the turquoise on there kind of floats mm -hmm. and stands out, but it wouldn't if it wasn't next to its exact opposite in a really right. low value on the color wheel. Yeah, that's really cool. That's so cool. And so you do classes, you're doing online classes, both for guilds and groups, and then individuals too, you have on demand. Right, classes. right. So if you go to lyriccanard.com, yeah, I have just put up her website. Thanks on online on demand classes, they're both the design courses, and I do have project technique classes as well. They're really fun to just mm -hmm. play around with. Um, and then all of those I also combine with live events. So if a guild hires me to teach for them live, I put together one of those online classes and then we get together live and go through the most important parts of that, the parts mm -hmm. where they need feedback and where I give a lot of personal attention and input. Yeah. But then they have access to that online class for a full 24 hours so they can go ahead or catch up and they can look at all the pre-recorded videos anytime they want for that that's time. Awesome. That's really awesome. One day I'm going to take your class. Remember I told you that when I snuck into her classroom in, in Louisiana and I, it was funny because you know you guys know me and my stuff and the big rulers and the lot of fabric because we're making big quilts. All the and things. And then we walk into Lyric's classroom. Everybody's really in a small space working on their little stuff. I'm like, oh, this is so cute. I want to be here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, because yeah. in my class, the hard work all is up here. Yeah. You know, so people, it's it's really funny how exhausted using your brain can be sometimes. Because <laughs> I could just sew stuff together without thinking about it all day. But we work really hard and learn a yeah. lot of really interesting new things that you can take back and put into absolutely whatever you feel like right. making. And just learning to break the rules, which I always encourage rebel behavior in my classes and whatever you're doing. Like rules and a pattern is just a guideline. Just be a rebel and try it. Because if you don't try it, you don't know. So I'm yeah, sure isn't that, that your favorite, right? Yeah. The, and when that's why like ask everybody you, you asks say, me, how do you pick your colors? I was like, just try it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Then you know. Wait, then you learn what something. If? <laughs> <laughs> what if is my favorite answer? Can I do this? Yeah. What if you do? <laughs> Yeah, right. Try, see yeah. What happens. And so I can imagine sometimes that's the hardest part for you to get them to break out of, uh, you know, all those rules. And if it's been traditional quilters for a really long time and like, just break it, just try it and go there. Yeah. So well, once you do, it's freeing. Yeah, kind of. Um, what more of what it is, is we start with little boundaries and little boxes mm -hmm. and you get comfortable in there and then you can move out. So it's not... A, we there actually is structure to learning art right. just oh, like course, you yeah. learn how to read right so we and i tell them um you know it takes them a bit of getting used to 
But I tell them everything we do is like kindergarten and it's like recess and finger painting and playtime. And yeah. the most important thing you can do in my class is to make a mess um, <laughs> and to make terrible bad art. But then we go and we analyze and we think about it and we figure out what was going on. And even when you make a mess, sometimes that's the most important thing you needed to do in order to get to the good stuff. Yeah. Right? It's the fastest way to get to the good stuff is make a lot of bad stuff first. Yes. I love that. I love that. And that's, you know, don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to do that. Now, uh, another thing I've admired you so much for is your kind of humanitarian and uh, work and, and, and uh, what, how should I say? I'm looking for a word. Just your Social justice. Philanthrop philanthropy work, <laughs> you know? You know? Treating people well. <laughs> yes, treating yeah. people well. Yeah, and, I've and, worked with refugees and And pushing and for immigrants. change and things like that. Yeah. And I've so worked... some of your art pieces, like, for example, even though I don't make art quilts, the Harmony quilt, what it inspired the block, and, and my quilt, like, really goes deep and, and hopefully has pushed for some change or for people to look at things a little bit differently or... Uh, but what we're doing today is everybody's kind of taking that idea and and putting it into their own What do they want to make a statement about? Maybe they just want to make a pretty quilt. That's totally cool and mm -hmm. should be your journey But have you made pieces that? You know are Pushing us uh, not agenda. I shouldn't say not pushing agenda, but but opening eyes to certain that things. are statement pieces statement Yeah, pieces. for sure. Um, I've made a lot of pieces about um women's rights and about immigrants and refugees rights and the most recent piece I just finished was a memorial quilt for um, Jonathan Farrell um, who was a young man who got in a car wreck and had a head injury and knocked on a door close by to get help um, and unfortunately they called the police and the police shot him oh, you know boy. so um, that it's through the Social Justice Sewing Academy, which is yeah. an amazing group of young people um, are doing, uh, it's kind of like the AIDS quilt, but it's a memorial gathering. So yeah. I was um, truly honored to be able to take part in that project. That's amazing. That social, uh, that academy, I just applied to be a mentor. So Oh, I go you! Yay, fabulous. me too! Yes, we'll see if they take me, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Well, it was so much fun visiting with you. Do you remember, was this a year ago or two years ago when we met? It was New Orleans, and I think it's about a year and a half ago because it was really early spring. It was early year, yeah. See, yeah. time is just like... All one big mush up here. <laughs> <laughs> who knows what day it is, what month. But this was so much fun, and thank you for being with us, and I hope uh, a lot of you that are my viewers that are afraid of art to quilt but want to maybe put, you know, dip your toes in it, check out Lyric. She's the best. Thank right. you so much. And hope, hopefully we'll see each other in person real soon. I'm sure we will. It's been yeah. such a pleasure to see you again, Gudrun. Yeah, Thank you, you so much for inviting me. Yeah, of course. Thanks, Lyric. Bye-bye. All right. This was awesome. It, doesn't that just want to make you start make an art quilt <laughs> really truly um, before I dive into the demo I wanted to I'm sure you want to know about my shirt United Against Hate I just wanted to tell you but I did put a link to um, the Urban Ventures so everything will be on the blog so this will be there too so this is this shirt is made by the Human Rights Campaign campaign so the shirt is United Against Hate um, and that their mission statement, I just want to read that because I think it's really cool. By inspiring and engaging individuals and communities, the human rights campaign strives to end discrimination against LGBTQ people and realize a world that achieves fundamental fairness and equality for all. Uh, human rights campaign envisions a world where lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer people are ensured equality and embraced as full members of society at home, at work, and in every community so really cool stuff really cool and then what beautiful colors really pretty colors so that is uh my shirt for this segment but i'm sure you're anxious to get going so in this next step what i want you to do is we're going to go through uh where what i do my pattern i put it away so this segment we're going to go through uh we did step one and two we're going to go through step three 
and four. So I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of doing step three, which is a folded corner method, which really means we are starting with, we're going to take our large triangles from the background, and then we have the squares from the two colors. And so what we're going to do is we're going to place the squares in the corners and do a folded corner. So I put two different methods in the pattern. So first one is just a basic method, which I'm sure you've seen before. So that it would just involve taking your squares, and that means all your different color squares that you cut from the strips. You're going to have a ruler, line it up on the two corners, and then you're going to just draw a line, corner to corner. There's tools to do that too. And then you place that on the corner of the triangle, and then you stitch on the line. In my case, I've always recommended when you're stitching, to stitch right next to the line. So let the needle touch the line, and we're gonna stitch on the, uh, the tip side, the, the tip that's gonna get cut off. So I'm gonna show you here. I don't know if you can see it. We can maybe go up close. So my line is here, and then the stitch is a little bit to, a little bit to the right of it. So I'm gonna show you in the overhead. Because what that does by doing that, it, by doing a stitch just next to the line, that when we press, it really helps the triangle go all the way over instead of stitching on the line, then sometimes we get a little short. So that, that's a really nice tip and really helps with when you're doing that. So that's one way. So you would stitch that like this. Um, and so you would stitch everybody, all of your units once you have drawn all, all the units on. And then I just use a ruler. I place the quarter inch line on the ruler on the line, we trim our seam allowance, and then we press. Now, the other method is trimming off that tip before we stitch. So two different ways that I'm gonna show you is using the point trimmers, if you have those, and in particular, we'll be using the 90 degree trimmer. Let me show you, it's hard to see it. So the 90 degree trimmer that has the two 45 degree corners. And then the other tool I have, which is awesome, which is Doug Lico's Simply Folded Corners Ruler. It looks like this. And so it's a bigger thing because you can use it for multiple different sized pieces. And he actually has two methods in here. If you like oversized pieces, you can use it as a, and then trim down. But I'm gonna show you first, I'm gonna show you first with his ruler. So what you do here is you're gonna place that ruler and so we're gonna cut off a quarter inch from those corners. So you just place your square right sides together, right in the corner here. And then I have the ruler. And so I have just marked with my arrows the two and a half inch square here. And so I'm using the lines, the square lines on the ruler to line up within here. And then automatically that diagonal line is right in the perfect spot to just cut that off. So I would cut that off. And then I would just grab a pin to make sure that this gets, stays in place. And then now I'm ready to just sew that with my scant quarter inch seam and this will just be sewn perfectly and I can stitch out. So you can trim these beforehand. If you don't have Doug's ruler, you can actually do this with my point trimmers. So I'm gonna do it with a different piece of fabric here to show you. So the point trimmers are obviously little, so we can use them to do this same technique for smaller things. So up to a two and a half inch square, but it's perfect for that. So we just place this in the corner and then the point trimmer will have, it has um, the 90 degree corner here. So we're gonna place that alongside the edge of the square and then that blunt side to the edge of this side. So then what you will see is that dotted line will go corner to corner on that square. And same thing, you're just gonna cut this off like that. And then you have your quarter inch lined up. I'm gonna place my pin. And all I have to do is do the stitching and we're done. So no drawing. Um, a lot of you maybe have a, 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 an attachment on your machine where you can just sew corner to corner. You can use that as well. Uh, I have a laser on my sewing machine, so I can have a laser kind of point corner to corner, so I don't ever have to draw lines. But once you have this sewn, let me show you, you wanna press these guys. So we're gonna press them the same way 
all of the triangles gets pressed the same way, whether they are fabric A or fabric B, just towards that little triangle. So I fold it out and then again, make sure to just go across and hand fold it first, hand fold it first, and then just go across. My iron isn't hot right now, so it's not pressing re really well. I forgot to turn it on again. So that is the step three that we're gonna go through. Check these two different methods if you wanna try it. It's really nice. And then always just choose what works for you. So the next step for the, from the, there is step four. So what we're gonna do, you have your triangles from the step three and then we have our units from step two, so the matching ones. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna sew these on like this. And so what you wanna do here, sometimes uh, it's hard to know which, which one goes where. So what you wanna do is the triangle, it needs to match the long strip. So this is gonna get sewn to this, so they are supposed to touch. So the same fabrics are supposed to touch. A really good tip to remember. So what I do here, I flip these over on like this, and then I actually pin it. I, because it's a longer seam and it's a long bias seam, I actually put a couple of pins here. I'll put another one down here just to help that tip because then when I take it to my sewing machine, I wanna flip this over and feed it through my sewing machine this way so that my bias is on the bottom. So we're gonna sew this way. You will notice that these, there's a tip that's gonna stick out here from the background triangle. Don't worry about that. You're just gonna keep sewing with your scant quarter inch and sew all the way. So again, fold this over to make sure, I always check, double check and make sure that this is matching. So this is gonna fold over make my pins and then flip it over to sew. All right, because it is really easy to accidentally sew the wrong side. So just make sure you pin so that you know which side you're sewing to. So then after that step, you are gonna have two, step, two pieces that look like this. So opposite pieces, all right? So that is as far as we're gonna go with this, but I am gonna check on your questions and see if you have any questions on this, these two steps. So what I literally want you to do is, however many you got done in the first session for steps one and two, you're gonna continue on and make, make those into um, those units. All right, um, this is awesome. I don't see any questions yet. Really good, so it's great to see that you're choosing different techniques. And remember Bob, we're, it's gonna be all about Bob today. Uh, why did I flip to sew? Because we wanna have the bias on the bottom, so Bob. So I, I like to line it up first. So I like to line it up first. Let's go to the overhead um, view. Line it up first to make sure that I'm sewing this. This is gonna be sewn to this piece. So then I know that it's lined up, I can pin it, and then I just flip it because I want that bias to be on the bottom. So that was the reason for the flip. Because if I start lining things up this way sometimes, and I only tell you this because I made the mistake myself, I sewed the wrong side and then uh, this is not the right look. It needs to be this way, all right? So that's just an easy way for me to make sure they get done right. And so that's what I always share. All these little tips are probably come to be because I made the mistake myself. So let's see if we have any. So should we be matching the points? So uh, what you will see when you flip these over, I'm gonna show you in that, let's, let's go to the really close up camera. So what you will see here, we're gonna, put this over, so what you will see, like the triangle is gonna extend lower than the seam. So, but when you place this on top, when you sew with a quarter inch seam, they should land right here. So that when, so your seam is gonna be somewhere around there, right? So then when you press this open, they are going to be hitting right at the right spot. So let me show you here. 
with this purple one, you can easily see it. So as you sew, um, your quarter inch seam goes here. And then once you press it, they will land perfectly here in the corner or should. Close enough, right? One thing I forgot to tell you when we press these guys, once you sew this tri big triangle onto the big piece, again, you wanna set the seams first, push it out. We're gonna be pressing towards the big triangle. So then push with your fingers and go straight across. So the seam is gonna go towards that big triangle with a little triangle attached. So they, once we, before we get to the last step, they should be going opposite directions. All right, any other questions? I just think everybody's super excited. I, I think everybody's jamming to the playlist, having a good old time, and I love that. That's how it should be. So uh, printed fabric words are going in the same direction. How do you make sure that happens? Okay, let me show you a little trick on that. Um, okay, I probably don't have, so, okay, I can show you kind of the idea behind it. So if your words are going this way, and these landed this way, so when I was placing my, to figure out how I was going to place my square, if it was going to be this way or this way, what I made sure I had my square, I had it lined up with this, so they were going the right way. And then I could just took it over here and laid it first on top. And then all you have to do is just flip it this way and it will land the right way. You want to see that again? All right. So pretend that this has print running this way, just like this print here. And I could match it up. So they're going the right direction. So then I place it on top of my big triangle. And then all I do is take this corner, flip it to the outside corner. So flip it like this. And then once you sew it, it'll be correct. That's a little trick there. Did we get that? Do we need to show it one more time? That's tricky. <laughs> it's tricky. I like being tricky, but you know what? If it doesn't work out, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. There are places where I didn't get it right. So not a big deal. It's just going a little direction. And these are looping, looping links. So uh, it doesn't matter if they're all going the same way. All right. Any other questions? Um, how would this pattern in a placement, oh, pattern placement look if made scrappy? Um, pattern placement so I'm wondering so scrappy strips is what it is made for so that really doesn't matter but I think if you use if you don't use the just two fabrics in the links you kind of lose the interlocking design so some when you're making scrappy quilts sometimes has you have to really pick and choose where things are wild and where things uh, come together because you don't want to do all that work and you don't really see the interlocking uh, links of the block you know, does that make sense? So for example, if you would use a blue and a green and a red, they wouldn't connect. Um, and then the other one would be yellow, orange, and something else. It wouldn't uh, make sense that way. But use it scrappy is so that you would have a red and a yellow or something like that, like that. But you could use three different reds, which would be totally cool. And three different yellows. Does that make sense? Um, all right, show, can you show me the back of the big triangle already sewn to the smaller block? Well, smaller block, they're the similar size, but here is, here's the, how the back looks uh, when it's sewn. Here's the small triangle or large triangle with a small one, and then these are sewn on. So they should look like that when they are pressed on the back. Here's the front. All right. Any other questions? How's everybody doing? Did anybody make the recipes? I heard some people were working, made, had made the cake. Uh, we didn't make the recipes, but I think there's a load of Merlot cheese in the fridge. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, thanks for showing how to use Doug's ruler. I've had it in my collection of rulers, but never used it. It makes so much easier than drawing the line. Sure does. Um, 
That's great. Well, that's really awesome. I think uh, that's going to be pretty much it. Is it time for, is it, what time is it? It's 1140. I mean, it's five o'clock somewhere, right? I think it might be time for an adult beverage. What do you think, Mr. HP? Should we uh, break into that before the you. next section? Oh, you have an idea? Oh. Like this one right Ah, here. that's a big oh, one. Oh, oh, oh. Hi, so everybody. a friend brought this big, oh, here, big, ooh, yeah, and it's cold. I think this okay, is what good. we're going to be doing. Okay, all right. Good thing I got some help with that one. I wouldn't be able to finish that off myself. But so excited to see your progress. And I will be back in uh, an hour and 15. The session winners. Oh, right. We forgot to. The session winners from the first session. Here's our winners. Let's announce our winners. Congratulations goes to. We got two winners. Teresa Lynn Capital and Lori Abens. Those are our live winners. Congrats, congrats, congrats. So we will be in touch. If you see this, message us, send me an email so we can get your information to get your prize to you. Congrats, it'll be either G Designs or Moda. Really good stuff. So that's it for session, uh, section two or part two of the Quilt Along. I can't wait to see you back for part three in about an hour and 15. I'll see you later, everybody. Mm -hmm.